declare with our whole heart, nothing is impossible for our God. Whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, we declare by faith, nothing is impossible for our God. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to Glad, T Glad Tidings Wednesday night worship service. To our family online, we see you, we love you, we believe for you, we are praying for you, and we believe that nothing is impossible for our God in your situation. Well, what a privilege it is, guys, to be in the house of God tonight and to worship Him with all of our hearts. Um, our ushers have clipboards for us tonight, and we're just encouraging for anyone who's interested to join our choir. You know what, the choir is a really wonderful place to be because it is a real privilege and honor to worship our God. We worship God because we love Him. We worship God because He deserves our praise. We worship God because He is worthy of all of our praise. So we encourage you to really just take hold of this wonderful opportunity to give your praise to God, to, to, to stand on stage and to just worship God with your whole heart. So we encourage you to sign up for the choir. Um, and our last announcement for today is um, Pastor Calvin, our very own Pastor Calvin, will be with us this Sunday. He will be preaching. You know what? Pastor Calvin is a real man of God. Pastor Calvin loves this house. Pastor Calvin honors this house. Pastor Calvin loves our pastor, and he honors our pastor. And Pastor Calvin is a man, is a man with a real word from God. So I encourage you to come this Sunday with your hearts prepared to receive from him, to receive from the word of God. All right, let's lift our hearts and let's just worship. Let's just declare with faith that nothing is impossible for our God.
Let's pour our thanksgiving to Him. Oh, I give thanks, oh Lord. Oh, now, yeah, I will say, I am strong. Oh, I will say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done oh, for us, and now I will say, I am strong, and I will say, I am rich because. Pour out a thanksgiving, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus, we take comfort in you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus, we rejoice in you, Jesus. We take heart in you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. Be magnified, be made bigger in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus, bigger Lord, louder Lord Jesus, clear Lord, your voice Jesus, hallelujah, I honor you Jesus, I honor you Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you Jesus, we do, thank you Lord, thank you Jesus, we honor you Lord, most high God. Most highly in this place, we honor you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we do. That's what we love to do, Lord God. We say it again, Lord. Be magnified, God. God, we say, Lord, be made bigger, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Be made clearer, Lord Jesus. Your voice louder, Lord Jesus. Above every other voice, Lord Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Father. We just say with one heart, we love you, God. With one heart, Lord Jesus, we adore you, Jesus. That's what we do, Lord God, from our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And God, just with just brothers and sisters, one house, one family, is it okay if we pray and we do one thing very quickly? Is that okay with everybody? God, we just, in the spirit of worship, God, God, we lift up our pastor to you, Jesus. God, we just pray for healing, Lord God. We pray for your mighty hand of healing. We know that your word clearly says that you are the healing God. You are the God who heals his people. And we declare your name, Jesus. And God, we thank you for the mighty hand of healing, Lord God, on Pastor Shot, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for your mighty healing hand, God, that is on his body. We thank you, Lord Jesus. That is who you are, God. That is who you are, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we continue in the spirit of worship, uh, we can have all the ushers hand everyone an envelope. Let's just begin to give with a joyous heart to God. For those of us who are a little higher tech, we got e for e-transfer, we got finance at gtchurch.ca. That's finance at gtchurch.ca. If you really want to, you can mail it. Or we got the envelopes right now. <laughs> I had a blast with the young adults and teenagers because how many of you know they tithe too. <laughs> they tithe too. And I and I had a and I had a really fun experience because 
we, we just spoke the word because it's from the word of God. We say, like, oh, let's tithe. This is the promise of God. This is the, this is the command of God. This is in his word. And then I got a report from the, from the people who count the money. They would say, whoa, we had a surge of money come in. <laughs> and I tell the, I think some of the larger churches in this city, the fact is that um, 20, 30% of the congregation tithes, and then they just depend on that. How many of you know I'm 100% serious when I told the teenagers and young adults, if the adults will not tithe, I fully expect 100% of you to carry this church financially, and I am not joking. <laughs> we got some six-figure paydays, and that's not good enough. <laughs> Here we go. Amen. <laughs> no exaggerating. <laughs> Here we go. I, 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 I love it. There was a, there's a beautiful pastor and a mentor who said something very interestingly, very interesting to me once. He said that a young person, that would probably be someone around my age, I guess, who came up to him and said, this pastor, and said, I don't understand your older generation. I don't really like how you do things. I don't like how you make money a part of the service. I don't like how you talk about money. I don't know. I just, I, I just, I just don't like it. And, the, and the, the person that I highly respect, he responded, well, you can go ahead and do that. But it was my generation that built all the churches and facilities that you use right now. It's, my, it's our generation who knew how to handle money and wasn't, wasn't skirting around the subject. We fed the poor. We supplied the nations. And we walked in our calling mightily. And so I might be young, but the Word of God clearly says we will bless the nations and we will tithe with one heart. Amen. We'll be a blessing. God rejoices with a generous heart. And we are called to live fruitful lives. Amen. So one more time, we got, we make sure an envelope is in everyone's hands and e-transfer, that's at finance at gtchurch.ca. And once again, if you want to mail it, you can do that. <laughs> that's 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver. Amen. Come on, let's rejoice together. Hallelujah. Let's just give to the Lord. Thank you, worship team. so wonderful to be with everyone here tonight, sooner than I thought. <laughs> Back again. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and I, I, have a, I, have a, I, have a, I have a word pressing on my heart to share with everybody today. Um, we will always, um, I think it's just a part of living as God's people. We will always have the promises of God on our lips. We're always wondering, does that sound a little too spiritual? <laughs> Listen, we're all, wonder we're all, okay, let me bring it down to earth, all right? Like, we're all wondering about God. What, like, God, what's going to happen with my spouse in the future? Um, God, what's going to happen with my finances? God, what's going to happen with my family? Is this all there is? Um, does that make sense? We always have the promises of God on our lips as God's people. We're always thinking about that. But I want to share with everybody something very important today um, because us, we as people and we as believers, if we are ignorant of some things, if we're not clear about some things in our lives, we're going to be caught in these wilderness seasons where we're just wandering and and we and has has anyone been in a season like that before where we're just want we feel like okay god's promises are on my lips but what i've been wandering and and we all and we know and i see this i'm gonna say in faith too much where um it it's where we see this common where God, okay, where are you? Where are you? And it's been a little too long. <laughs> it's been a little bit long. Is this what it's supposed to be like? Um, how many of you would say in faith with me today, it's not 
determined to be wandering for a long time. Amen? Amen? I, I, how many of you say, I mean it? Come on, I want to hear a louder response than that. You don't have to. <laughs> don't force or pretend the faith. <laughs> we fully believe wandering and pain don't need to be prolonged. Seasons of it. Amen? So can I start with asking everyone a question today? What are the promises of God for us? What are the plans of God for us? What are the intentions of God for us? And I want to tell everyone straight from the, straight, straight from the top today, um, throughout the Word of God, throughout Scripture, God communicates His intention very clearly. It, I, <laughs> it, it, does that make sense to everybody? Throughout Scripture, God makes it very clear. It's not vague. What are God's intentions for you? What are God's purposes for you? I need to encourage you today, straight from the top, it's very clear. Amen? Isn't that good? <laughs> God met, purposed us so that we could be in connection with God and walk in his authority. All throughout the word of God, let's start with the, some things very famous, the Beatitudes. Most of us have heard of the Beatitudes before. They said, all, um, we, um, it says, blessed are the meek. Blessed are, in other words, people like Jesus. People with the character like Jesus. People who are humble. People who are poor in spirit. People who will fight for righteousness. Blessed are these people. Essentially, it's saying blessed are people who are like, who are like Christ. Blessed are you, for you will inherit the earth. Blessed are you, for you... For yours is the kingdom of heaven. So right from the top, the word of God in this, in, in this famous, important scripture, it tells us that we are purposed for authority. I know some of you in this place, the mo I, so, so far from what I've spoken, I've lost some of you guys already. Because the word of authority is not very clear. But I think I'm communicating very clearly. God, what are his purposes and its authority? I'll explain more in a moment. <laughs> Revelations chapter 5 verse 10. We were purposed to rule and reign with Christ. When he comes back, what happens then? God purposed, to, purposed us to rule and reign with Christ. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28, it says clearly, so for, we, we went from Revelation to Jesus' life, and now Genesis, the first book in the Old Testament. It says, God purposed us to have dominion over creation. This is before the fall. <laughs> so this is meant for eternity as well. This is kind of exciting, um, if it's not too confusing. Um, God purposed us to, to be stewards, to have authority over creation. And I'll say it one more time. And you can see with Adam and Eve and how they lived, they had dominion and they had authority. They walked with God in God's purposes. And so I want to say to you one more time, God's purposes for us, if we would understand it, is to share and walk in his authority with him. Is that clear so far for everybody? So I'll say it one more time, God is authority, and he intends to impart his authority to us, that we may walk with him and be a blessing. So I want you to say to the people around you, all right, it's Wednesday, so you're going to so have to speak a little bit louder to the people around you. I was made to walk with God. I was made to walk with God. Say it. <laughs> If you believe it, say it. I was made to walk with God. Amen? So I want to clarify with everybody this confusing word, authority. It's confusing because of the generation and the age we live in. What is authority? Because I know when I said that, a lot of you, in your mind, you said, what does authority have to do with me? I'm just here to, to live my life. I don't want to be a pastor. Who here wants to be a pastor? Probably not a majority of you. <laughs> I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a president. I don't want to be the mayor. Why, 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 what does authority have to do with me? Did anyone have a, did anyone have a thought like that? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know about this authority thing. And that's not an accurate understanding of authority, all right? Because I want to say to you again, God has a promise on your life. If we would understand his purposes in our life, we can lock in. We can lock in. Here we go. John 14, 6, it says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. 
And it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, that Jesus came to live for us an example of life for us to follow. This is what the Word of God says. And I want to ask you guys something very clearly. When, when we submit to the when we submit to God, when we, when we start to learn his character, when we start to take our stubbornness and trade it for his kindness, when we start to submit to his character, we start to learn his diligence, we start to learn his, his, his understanding, we start to learn to honor, is not what happens naturally. What happens naturally is that he, we can be entrusted with more things in life. Is that true? Does this make sense? This is authority. Authority is not being the mayor. Authority is not being called leader by other people. It is when we submit ourselves to God and we start becoming more like Jesus, cannot a more honorable, responsible person be entrusted with more things? Amen? I know somebody, I, I know somebody <laughs> who who um, was from a background where they, where, where they had to earn everything. All their value comes from being told that they're valuable or in, invaluable. And so they are, they, in, in, when they're an adult, it nurtures a very insecure person who needs to be confirmed that that they're worth that they're worth anything. They need that, and and I noticed in this um, this colleague, uh, this former colleague of mine, that um, what they would do with that insecurity is, they it, when they come to the house of God, um, when other people are are begin to be trained. How many of you know when the next gen, when younger people start to go on the worship team, when younger people in your company start to take positions, um, start to become skilled? Um, how, how many of you guys know, have seen this before, where a person from insecurity will begin to push them down, will begin to press them, won't be happy at their maturity, they, they'll, they'll, there's going to be an undercurrent of pushing them down, and and and, and we and I observe backstabbing, and when and when and when other when God started to raise up other people in the church, there there was a response of insecurity and fear, and some of us we some of us we've experienced that before, or we know people like that. How many of you know that even if the pastor wanted to promote them? They can't. <laughs> you can't. How can you promote that? It's, uh, it's un, it's, you cannot, God can't work on that, even if he wanted to. Is this making sense? This, what, is authority starting to make a little bit more sense? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, it says that flesh cannot fulfill the purposes of God. It can't inherit the kingdom of God. It can't under the flesh cannot understand the purposes of God. Um, if, um, if you have if if you have somebody who's my my wife is studying to be a counselor, um, and how many of you know if you have someone who's divorced uh, fifteen times and not very happy in her sixteenth marriage, and um, preaches to all and and preaches from preaches with it from the top of her lungs, put yourself first. Put yourself first. How many of you know that is the marriage counselor you want in your life? How many of you know that's? But the funny thing is, this is exactly what happens in our society today. My wife would know. And when my wife tells me what goes on in school sometimes and in the counseling field, I'm like, who are you getting to be your marriage counselor? <laughs> okay, am I the only one who thinks you should lead by example? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I would rather have a child, well, <clears throat> I would rather have a, a very young married person who lives it and is real counsel me in my marriage, even though I'm older, than have someone like that. All right? It, that, that, that's, that makes sense, right? That, that's, that's logical. <laughs> that's logical. How many of you want someone who's arrogant, someone who's insecure, someone who's self-willed to preach about who Jesus is to you from the pulpit? How many of you are excited <laughs> about having a preacher like that? Does this, does, this, does this make sense? Does this make sense? 
This it was I had a very it was a I had a very interesting observation. Does this authority make sense? When it's just when we submit to God and we start to become more like Jesus, we start to trust in Jesus more, and we become like Him. We get authority, and God purposes us for this authority. That's very important. I found it very interesting because. The, um, just for the sake of communication, not to oversimplify, but I, there, there was an individual that I knew who, um, n- not, not making them sound particularly bad, but they, um, they, you know, just, they, they didn't, when, when, they, when authority speaks to them, there's a bit of an undercurrent. Like when, when, when the boss comes, there's a little bit of a pushback, like, and there's a bit of a, comp- a competition. There's a little insubordination there. Um, and, um, and so when the senior pastor comes along, they're, they're like, oh, why does, why does he tell us what to do all the time? Why does he, why does he this? Why does he that? Um, I, I, I was behind the scenes, so I get to hear everything. <laughs> but, um, and this person, they wanted to preach. They wanted to teach. They wanted to lead. And how many of you know the answer is no. <laughs> Come on. Seriously. The answer is no. Stop it. Um, and, what ha- and then what happened was the pastor left for one week, as they do. Leaves for one week, takes a break. And, how- and I-, I thought it was a very interesting experience because uh, now the young people are here. Now, now the young people are leading worship and facilitating the service. And I saw the person come in. And how many of you, how many of you guys have been through something like this before? They're like, oh, Now's my chance. Now I can make myself a little bit louder. Now I can trick these young, ignorant, dumb child, children. And, and now's my chance to get, to get big because I can get a foothold now. <laughs> I thought it was very funny. Even if God wants to promote you, what's he supposed to do? What's he supposed to do? And I found it very offensive. <laughs> Seriously? Stop it. I probably preached my meanest sermon that week. <laughs> Stop it, please. That's what the Word of God says. Don't look down on young people. <laughs> Seriously, just stop it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, is it okay if everyone says, if you're in agreement right now with this Word, that God purposes you for what? For authority. I want you to say, God wants me to have his authority. Amen? Will we agree to that? Will we receive that, declare that? And, and we said this a couple weeks ago. Joseph in the book of Genesis sets us a very good illustration for how this works. Um, we see how um, Joseph had the hand of God and the call of God on his life. But it says in the word of God, flesh cannot contain the the purposes of God. And so he had to lose that if he was to be promoted. But what happened was Joseph was not, Joseph was promoted to Potiphar's house. But this was not the end of Joseph's journey. What you see is that Joseph, he grew he understood that he had to have character. He, ha- he understood and he matured. But how many of you know that God led him to the prison again before he entered his true calling? And what you see is that God doesn't only want to bless you. And this is why I'm saying so many times tonight that the purposes of God, what are they? The purpose of God is authority, even though I'm going to lose half of you while saying that, because the word authority is hard to comprehend in this age. But I want to say very clearly, most of us, we are at a place where we think, where we're thinking, God, what are your blessings? God, what are your blessings? What, how can I receive more of your blessings? How can I get more blessings? But how many of you would be, would be willing to consider that the purpose of God is not, does not stop at your blessings? And if we're going to stir up our faith and go a little deeper and be in line with God, we got to understand 
the purposes of God and not just our purposes. Does that make sense? And it says that after Joseph went through the refinement period, God taught him to not only be a good man and a good Christian, God taught Joseph to walk with his authority. How, what does it say in Genesis chapter 45, verse 7? It wasn't all about blessings anymore. How many of you guys know after Joseph was in the prison for all those years, he wasn't thinking about what, what, what time he would go to Wendy's? How many of you guys know he wasn't thinking anymore, when am I going to go golfing? When, how, how am I going to get my retirement program all figured out and live my life that way? How many of you know Joseph had to be taught <laughs> that what are the purposes of God? And it says that he finally got it. And I find that so exciting. He got it. Genesis chapter 45 or 7, it says that despite Joseph being abused, despite his rights being abused, his emotions being abused, despite his betrayal, he saw the purposes of God. And he wasn't stuck on those things anymore. He could comprehend the purposes of God. And I don't want that to sound deep because that's God's calling for you tonight. It said that it wasn't man's doing that this all happened, but it was God's doing so that he, there would be a great deliverance, that there would be a, that God wanted to use me for a blessing to other people. God wanted to use me to walk in his authority, and so he was be able to be trusted to be almost like Pharaoh, to be king in Egypt. He was, he finally got it. And God is speaking to you regarding this. In the season you are, you are in right now. Think about your family. Think about your work. Think about your situation. The place you are in right now, God is speaking to you. The place you are in right now in the house of God. How are you serving? Where are you at? God is speaking to you right now in this season. What, can I ask you guys a question? What are your purposes in your life? What are your purposes? And I'll ask you another question. Are they God's purposes? What are your purposes right now? What are you trying to achieve? What are you striving for? What are you hungry for? What are you doing? And are, is it what God is doing? Are they the purposes of God? And, and, and some people, they're pursuing blessings. But God is fighting and, and teaching them, how can you contain my glory? How can you walk with me? How can you be connected with me? How can you be like me? But, there, but all we are stuck on is how can I get what I want and be blessed? And you're not going to get it. And you're going to be doing one thing, and it's going to lead you to wander, but God is saying something else. Amen? And our purpose, when we pursue our purposes, when we're chasing after what, like our purpose, how many of you know that when you have a season of difficulty, you're going to run away? I, 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 had, I had many friends, they, they, will, they would work, and every time their workplace, I don't know, like Best Buy or some fast food chain or some office company, and they would work there, and when things got tough, when they didn't like what was going on anymore, guess what they said to me? I'm, I'm going to quit, obviously. I'm going to quit and move on and see what God has for me somewhere else because it looks like my time here has come up. How many of you guys know when, when we are following our purposes, it dictates how we act, what we're doing, what we're feeling, because what will happen is where we are will run away when we follow our purposes. And it's interesting because it's not complicated when we switch our mindset to God's purpose. When it's God's purpose in this exact same place, you don't need to do no magical trick. You don't even need to read a fancy book. It says that when we change our mindset to the purposes of God, we begin to see that this is the place. This place, God's led me here. And so I'm going to lock in and wait on 
God. Amen. And may I, I remember I, I remember when I remember when I was um, studying um, studying in my post secondary degree, and God so listen if if we okay let me backtrack a little bit. If you seek God, God, what are your purposes? What are you trying to teach me right now? Listen, it's, 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 God, how many of you know God is with you and God is a personal God? He's alive and speaks today. If you seek God, God will tell you in this season what to focus on. Listen, it's not, sometimes if we, you got to hone in to the Holy Spirit and begin to, in faith, pray and ask God, God, specifically right now in this season, tell me what I should do. Tell me what you're trying to teach me, and I'll tell you, God will tell you what to do in this season. It's not like, uh, it's not an open concept where Everything has to be worked on. <laughs> God will specifically tell you if you see God. How many of you know I am fully serious right now? If you see God for yourself, God, tell me, what are you calling me to do and hone in on in this season? And I remember so clearly when I was studying post-secondary. Okay, back. <laughs> when I was studying my post-secondary degree, um, I, I remember I'm a simple guy. And sometimes simplicity helps you hear God in certain ways. And so right at the beginning, I remember God so clearly spoke to me. He said, I brought you here. Not, listen, the purpose is not to pad your resume. How many of you know there's nothing wrong with a resume? How many of you know there's nothing wrong with blessing? But my purpose for you here is not a padded resume. I'm not, I did not bring you to this university so that you can look good. Nope. I purposed you, and he said this to me, and this was my personal journey, and God answered me. He said, I brought you here specifically because you, I, I have greater things for you than you're capable of right now, and you got to grow up, and you got to grow some character. You got to learn some discipline because you, you a little child. <laughs> you are a little child, and you don't, you have a good heart, and you, do, you are undisciplined, <laughs> and he said, this is the reason I brought you here, and, and, and that carried me through the entire way and determined my paths. Where other people would have given up and lost heart, I'm like, okay, an extra semester, Great, more chance to learn character, and I know I haven't fully learned it yet. How many of you know when you know God's word and purpose for you, it changes your perspective? If you have the faith, is it okay we stir up our faith a little bit tonight? I remember in that place, I was like, ooh, I could use another semester. I don't know if my discipline is that refined yet. Now, let's keep going. Let's keep going. But other people will be like, what? Oh, man. <laughs> Who does this? What is everyone else doing? Why am I still here? I'm like... I don't need to think. I know exactly why God brought me here. And I, I hope I better, I hope I hurry up. <laughs> when our purpose, when, when we hone in and switch our perspective to God's purpose, everything changes. Everything changes. And so would you forgive me for starting it in that confusing way? God's purpose for us is authority. God is authority, and he would walk with us. He calls us to walk with him and inherit his authority, just like Joseph. Would we follow him up there? Will you trust God today with your blessing? God, you will look after my blessing. Can we stir up our faith a little bit tonight? God, you will look after my blessing, but God, give me courage Give me faith. Give me resilient persistence that I would go after you and where you've put me in this season. Come on. Pastor loves to talk about a fight. <laughs> Pastor loves to talk about being ugly. <laughs> Let's get a fight on. And God, would you give me the persistence to lock in and pursue what you have for me this season. Let me be like you in this season. Let me not give up. Amen? Amen. When God refines us, when God refines us, he wants to have us grow. He wants us to be able to contain more of him. He wants us, our spirits, to mature. God will lead 
us to places in life. Remember when I talked about the waiting? <laughs> where God will lead us to places in life where our values have to change. Does that sound a little funky? Does that sound a little hard to understand? God will lead you when God wants to refine you, when God wants you to mature and be able to contain more of him and walk with him closer. You will be led to a place where you have to change. Your values have to change. Your motivation has to change. How many of you know, uh, for me, I've served in church. I know what it feels like that if I'm going to keep going, my motive better be right. Because my flesh is not motivated right now. (laughs) How many of you know, man, when you, I was not, I I served um, as the, I I served as the, uh, not a senior youth leader. (laughs) That doesn't make sense. I I, I was the pastor. I functioned as the pastor of um, the youth at a church for more than 10 years, but I was not recognized and I was not paid for all 10 of them. (laughs) How many of you know your flesh, if your motive, if you are going, God leads me, God leads us to a place, and if we are going to enter, if we're going to remain in this place and have what God intends for us, how can I keep my fleshly motivations? It's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. Our habits will have to change. Our values will have to change. God will lead us to a place like that. And in, how many of you know that in, how many of you have come to a place before where the old, man, if I'm going to stay here, the only way I'm going to be able to stay here is to change. How many of you, come on, how many of you have been in a place like that before? The only way I can stay here is to change. If I'm going to keep my feet planted here, if I'm going to tolerate, if I'm going to put up with this attitude, if I'm going to, if I'm going to put up with this, if I'm, (laughs) if I'm going to keep doing this thing that, that I, I don't feel, I don't feel enjoyment from doing, I'm going to have to change in order to even stay here. And God will lead us to a place like that. Is it becoming clear to everybody that waiting is not sipping a margarita on the beach? Waiting is not waiting for your Amazon mail to arrive, and in the meantime, you just do your thing. Waiting is very intentional. And in order to and in order to wait, you have to change. Who has been led by God to a season like that? And if you are following with me, all of you have been led to a season like that. If I'm going to stay here, if I'm going to keep my heart right, I, I, I won't be able to do it if I don't change. If my motive is not the recognition of other people, I won't be able to make it through. If my motivation is my own financial, my own, my own blessing in a financial way, I won't be able to make it through this because it ain't feeding me. How many of you know that God will lead you to a place like that? God will lead you to a place like that. I find it very interesting in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15, the word of God says that in, in resting, in waiting, in this strategic place where God has led you to. This same place that your peers have run away from. The same place where our flesh's reaction is get me out. I, I would let this end as soon as possible at any cost. This same place in this rest, in the quietness and in trust is your salvation. All throughout the Word of God, I cannot quote enough of them, all throughout the Word of God, the Bible talks about how 
there is strategic waiting places. David talks about how in the presence of conflict, in the presence of your enemies, God sets a table down and makes you be still. How many of you know in the storm, and Jesus' disciples were in the storm and on the sinking boat, Jesus said, be still and chill out. He's, when all throughout the Word of God, it, it talks about these strategic resting places. But in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, it's very interesting because it's very poignant in how it says, our salvation, where God is leading us, is found here in this strategic waiting season. And it even gives us a little bit of a, it even gives us a little bit of a warning <laughs> It says specifically to us, I don't know if we can get it up on the screen. Have there been scriptures up on the screen? <laughs> and when specifically what it says is in the in the in the scripture, what it says is, but you would have none of it. But you wouldn't do it. How many of us, it's not an accusation, how many of us have been in this place where I'm not comfortable? The people don't make me feel respected. If you want to feel disrespected, you should enter into ministry. <laughs> if you, if you, if some people want to go into ministry because they like how high this stage is from the ground. <laughs> how many of you guys know if you want to feel dishonored, you should go into ministry? <laughs> you're going to get some because you're going to deal with all colors of personalities. But it says specifically that it's in this strategic place where in order to remain here, you have to wait. And in order to wait, you have to change because it's too difficult for your flesh. It's too difficult for your pride to stay here. It's too painful for your ego. It's too suffocating for your plans. It's too suffocating for your will to stay here. And it says that it's in this place that God is working his salvation in your life. And it's, but it also says a warning of how, and I believe what it means is how important this season is. It says at the end of the scripture, but you wouldn't do it. You would, you would have none of it. I believe what this is saying is we have to be faithful and take this season we are in very seriously. We have to. If I, in my school, where God, in my schooling, for example, where I was learning my character, if I had thought for one second, you know, I could be making money right now. Boom, bye. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm using my connections. I'm, I'm, I'm heading out of here right now. If, if, if I, if, if. If we're in the place we're in, and I'm like, you know, these are my plans, and I'm kind of, I, I, you know, I've got all my machina machinations in here. These are, this is my agenda. This is my will. When we mix it in, how hard will it be for you to hear the voice of God? How hard will it be to be diligent and faithful and hear what God is saying to you in this season? In rest. Rest in the presence of of your conflict. Rest in the presence of your difficulty, quietness, trust. And it says you have to, you have to finish it. You have to finish this season. You must complete your season of waiting. Do I have to say again that waiting is not sipping a red wine in a glass and waiting? Red wine is mud in the trenches, waiting. Oh, my whole guts are spilling out when I'm waiting here. My ego is dead, smoked out, gone when I'm in this place. That is the place where God is fulfilling your salvation and your purposes. And it says you must complete the season. How many of you here have heard from God before? I'm training you in this season. How many of you have heard from God? I'm teaching you. I'm growing you. I'm maturing you. I'm expanding in this season. How many of you have heard that voice once in your life? I'm preparing you for my promise. 
I'm transitioning you into my promise. Well, I'm telling you today, this word is for you. This word is for you. And you ain't getting out. <laughs> it's okay, we have a little bit of fun. You ain't getting out. <laughs> we got to wait until the end. What happened to Saul in the Bible? Samuel said, wait. Samuel said, wait. And Saul was put to the test. Let's not talk about the conclusion. <laughs> we have to do it. We got to wait and make it to the end when God fulfills his purposes. Amen? Here we go. What will be refined in you? How many of you guys know? Let's, let's not dwell on this too long. Oh, our, our ego cannot survive. I, I know, I know um, one of the funny things, just a really down-to-earth, non-exciting example, is, is some of the times where God taught me how to honor my parents. <laughs> Here we go. That's a little down-to-earth. And how many of you know waiting sometimes is, uh, is an action? Being silent. <laughs> how many of you guys know sometimes waiting is not just your body? Waiting is an action. Keep your mouth shut. What did you just say? <laughs> and you have to wait. You have to wait. <laughs> you have to wait. There were times where I was bitterly I was bitterly mistreated, and God taught me to wait. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Hang in there for a second, specifically because God was teaching me something in this season. Amen? Who has been in a season like that before? And who has said in that season before, well, I'm running it. I'm out of here right now. Wait. And complete your season. Because in it is your salvation. Do not let that scripture, that warning apply to you. You would not have any of it. Here we are again. This season has lasted for 20 years. Wait. Oh, I know some of those things I went through. I, I'm not trying to be dramatic and... <laughs> but some of those, some of the things we go through, we, we, we feel like, oh, I could sure wait another one year. I'm going to open my mouth. <laughs> I could wait another five years. I'm going to say something right now. <laughs> but no, we fear God. We submit. We obey. Just anything. Just make it through. Complete your season. Amen? Amen? Here we go. Here we go. And some people will say, I, listen, I can't, I can't not want to feel important. I've been told that before. I can't help it. Well, I, I, it's, it's too hard. I can't do it. I, I can't help but feel insecure in this season. What are the things we've heard before? I can't help it but be here, but be doing this, but feel this way. And how many of you know when you wait, that dies. I can't. I'm too scared. But if you stay still, that dies. It dies. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says how we are all called to die with Christ. And I want to tell you that that's not a depressing word. That's a word of mighty power and hope. Because our addictions, our insecurities, our arrogance, our fear, our strong will, our self-will dies when we wait. If we fear God, if the Holy Spirit helps us, if we fight jealously, and we wait, and we stand still in that season, those things die. Wait. Wait until the completion of your season. Does that make sense? That, does that make sense? I, I, in, in when Saul had to wait for Samuel at the battlefield, and the enemy was coming. And Samuel said, don't do anything until I get there. How many of you know his fear 
died deeper. <laughs> you thought you'd die, but you died deeper every moment he waited. <laughs> and it said all his army left. How many even know he was dying <laughs> as he stood there? Yeah, how many even know he was dying? His ego, his dependence on man, his dependence on himself, his dependence on his will. All, will is not bad, but his dependence on it. All these things, they died as he waited for Samuel. And, in, and Samuel was, and God was purposing something in his life through that, pro, through that process. Would we stir up our faith in this season? Stir up our faith to begin begging God. Begging means humility, contrite humility, desperation. God, I need more courage if I'm going to get there. God, I'm going to have to. God, I fear man to death. I fear my, I fear suspense and ins I just fear it to death. But God, give me grace and help me get through this. Amen. I want to encourage some of you guys. I want to encourage you guys. I want to encourage all of us. Forgive me when I say you guys. It's out of habit. I'm a youth leader. <laughs> I want to encourage all of us here. Honored brothers and sisters. <laughs> Spiritual fathers and mothers. <laughs> here we go. I want to encourage all of us today. When you are diligent and faithful and you're waiting... When you are faithful in that process, sometimes you will falter. But I want you to lift up your head, look past that, and keep going. Look right past that and keep going. Do you know why? When the whole purpose of this process that God is working on your life, the whole purpose of it is to take you beyond any limit you ever had. And that is not going to be pretty. That's not going to feel good. Your ego, your, your perfectionism will be in shambles. But how many of you know your perfectionism wasn't necessary anyways? <laughs> I'm Chinese. Perfectionism is in our culture. <laughs> Here we go. But um, so when we fall, when we're trying to be faithful, when we waver, you know you're in the right place when you're faithful in this season. You know you're in the right place because it's, it's harder than you've ever gone before. I know I can lift 100 pounds. I didn't know I could lift 110 and ah, <laughs> when you fall, when you're wavering in that place, lift up your head because you know you followed God beyond the shoreline. You know that you have lifted up your head and you've lifted up your feet. And in faith, you've gone beyond the shoreline and any boundary you've ever gone before. And that is exactly where God is leading you. And when we are struggling and fighting, in, wrestling in that context, that is a sign of the pleasure of God. That is a sign that we're in the right place and in the pleasure of God. We're not just wrestling and trying to do, trying to confirm our own will anymore. We're trying to follow God, and it's difficult sometimes. Amen. Here we go. We can have, maybe we can have the, we can have the worship team get ready and come up as we're preparing here. But I want to encourage, I want to encourage you in John chapter twelve, verse twenty-four. What it says is that unless a seed, unless a grain, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies. It remains alone. It remains itself. It just stays the way it is. How many of you are beginning to see that staying the way I am is not compatible with what we say is the promise of God? God, would you today Turn to God in this season and say, God, I'm willing. Can we stir up our faith today? Can we stir up our courage today? God, you, I give my blessings to you. Would you say that with me tonight if you have the courage? Would you, stay, would you say that with me tonight? If there's something in your life specifically 
and you're wrestling, I invite you to stand with me also. Not everyone has to do it. But God, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. God, I give my blessings to you. I trust that you will take care of me. David in the book of Psalms says this exact scripture. He says, unless I believe God would take care of me, I give my future to God. I believe he'll take care of me. I would have lost heart if I hadn't done that. God, I believe you'll take care of my blessings. But God, I am going to just go after you. God, I am going to seek after your purposes. Authority? You want me to walk with you? You want me to connect with you? You want me to bond with you, love you more, see you more? What, uh, what deep thing is that? But God, I'm going to leave those, those things behind. I'm going to leave the other things behind. And God, I'm going to go after you. I'm going to stir up my faith. And I'm going to turn to your purposes, God. I'm going to trust in your purposes, Jesus. I'm going to trust in your purposes. And it says in John chapter 12, verse 24, that unless a seed dies, it remains itself. Would, what, would some of you today have a stirring on your heart? God, I will let my pride get brutalized in this season. I'll let it happen, God. God, I will let my, my control. God, I'll let my ego die and get beat up in this season. I'll let it happen. God, I'll let it happen. I give you my pride. I let it fall into the ground so that humility might rise from it. God, so I will let my ego die so that you will raise up humility in its place. God, I will do that. God, in exchange for spiritual vision, in exchange for seeing what you see, God, I will let it die. Would you say that with me tonight? God, I'll let it die. I'll let my pride fall into the ground and die. That humility may rise from it. That love may rise from it. That righteousness may rise from it. God, I'll let it die. I'll let my insecurity die. How many of you know when we wait, our insecurity freaks out? When we don't know what will happen tomorrow and we stay there and we wait, our insecurity is dying. It's dying on the cross with Jesus. And it's a terrifying thing. It's a thing, it's a process where we need the elders. It's a process where we need our brothers and sisters it's a process where we need grace and the Holy Spirit to give us strength and courage. But Jesus, God, I will let it fall into the ground. I'll let it die. You'll raise up a new confidence in its place. You'll be able to rest on me with your purposes in its place. I want to ask you guys, I want to ask all of you a question tonight. Where has God spiritually led you in this season? Wait courageously and diligently on the Lord. Let's just worship for one song. Hey, I am strong. Let the cross
thank you, Jesus, as you will give me the strength, God, as we say, God, as we say, God, I'm not going anywhere. I will remain here. I will wait on the Lord. I will wait here, God, for you. I will not go anywhere, Lord, until you come. I will not go anywhere until you arrive, Jesus. I will not go anywhere. As we begin to say that, Jesus will fill us with his strength. He will give us the ability to do it. Amen. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name tonight. Amen. Now lead us in one declaration. Nothing is impossible. Amen. <laughs>